The following is a test of the emergency broadcast A note. Had this been an actual emergency, I would have used a string that was the proper length for my instrument. Come on, stretch. Come on. Oh. Jesus, take the wheel, Christ. I'm about to get a random act of violins. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to String Theory, a video series in which we talk about musical instruments, most of them using strings. Today, I'm doing sort of a video response to Olaf the Violin Maker. Uh, he has this YouTube channel where, hang on to your socks, he makes violins. I know, crazy, right? Uh, YouTube channel where the actual title of the YouTube channel adequately describes the YouTube channel. I don't know where people get off on these things, I really don't. Now, personally, I've rather enjoyed Olaf the Electric Cello Maker's videos, as he goes into a lot of well, in-depth stuff about how violins are made, how violas are made, how cellos are made. Uh, a lot of great information is in it, and I've really enjoyed how he puts his information together. And a few months ago, he created a video in which he answered a bunch of questions from his viewers. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's this one right here. As I recall correctly, the title of the video is Olaf the Double Bass Maker Answers the Ultimate Questions of Life, the Unicorn, and Everything 2.0. Uh, one of the questions that was asked was, should you take the strings from a full-size violin and put it onto a quarter-size violin. For the record, this is a full-size violin, is what we're talking about. So a quarter-size violin is going to be a lot shorter. So he's asking, among other things, should you cut the strings so that they are the right size for the smaller instrument? Now that is an interesting question that I wanted to answer as a guitarist more than a violinist because guitarists do in fact cut or trim the strings so that's something that I wanted to tackle on the guitar rather than the violin so it is something I wanted to discuss maybe in a later video and given my track record on how often I make videos that can make be anything from next week to sometime next year I know it's the bane of somebody who works 40 hours a living and does the YouTube thing on the soft time, but anyway. Olaf went on to sort of expand the question, not just uh, full size strings on a quarter size violin, but what would happen if you put viola strings onto a violin, in short, creating a shorter violin? And that's something that's kind of right up my alley. You're talking about. Uh, alternative strings, alternative tuning of instruments, and that is just the sort of thing that I do. So I decided that I would go ahead and do that thing I just said. Now, before we do that, let's get on the same page of exactly what it is that we're talking about. This purple one is a viola, and yes, it's purple. I know the lighting situation on the camera and everything, it looks sort of a light blue color, but it is purple, it's royal purple and it's sparkly, which is perfect for me because apparently I'm a pretty princess. So, viola, as you can see, holding these up, is significantly larger than a violin. But, like violins and violas, they actually come in different sizes. I was talking about a full-size violin versus a quarter-size violin. You also have different sizes of violas. When you're talking about sizes of violas versus violin, you're talking about the average. On average, violas are in fact larger than violins. What actually set these two instruments apart is in fact the musical range, the notes that the strings are tuned to, because the viola is tuned lower. A C, G, D, and A, but a violin is tuned higher, G, D, A, and E. So, that's the top string on the viola, that's the top string on the violin. So the question is, can you put the strings from this lower one onto the higher one, in fact, creating 
a smaller size viola, but why would you want to do something like that? Now, this is a 16-inch viola. How do you know it's a 16-inch viola? Because if you measure it, the bottom of the instrument to the top of the body, it is, in fact, 16 inches, conveniently enough. Compared to that, uh, full-size violin that we were just looking at is 14 inches. But what difference does that make? If you put this instrument up to my shoulder and somehow get the beard out of the way, fair enough, but if you take that away, you notice that this arm, as you can tell from the angle, is really, really far out there. I'm really having to stretch in order to actually get this arm out to the end of the fingerboard, and it's not very comfortable for me. Now let's switch out instruments. Now let's try this one. Put that up, put the arm up. And if you take that away, you'll notice that this arm is a lot closer to my shoulder. This is a lot more comfortable for me. Now all of this stands to reason, of course, because apparently I have a 24-inch arm length or 23 inches if I bring it in a little bit closer to make it a little bit more comfortable. Now according to the official charts, a 23-ish arm length should have no problems playing a full-size violin, but I should have significant problems playing a 16-inch viola. As a matter of fact, anything above 15 inches would be problematic for me, and that is true. I have difficulties playing that large purple instrument, but I have no problems playing the orange one. In other words, if I can get the purple one to be the size of the orange one, then I'll be golden. But how exactly do I go about doing that? Well, the quickest and easiest solution to this issue is simply to buy a 14-inch viola. Where the hell do I get one of those? At this time of day. During this heat wave. During this pandemic. So I decided to go with my partners in crime. And uh, no offense to uh, Olaf the Octobase Baker. But I tend to go with this online retailer called Fiddler Shop. So I decided to go to the Fiddler Shop website to see what they have on tap. And apparently they have this instrument right here. This Tower Strings Viola for about $300, or however much that is in Australian dollars. Well, how much, what, how much of this Mickey Mouse money do you want? But this is also the least expensive model. Everything else goes above that uh, $500, $800, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. Uh, but is it any good? Because you're looking at this picture and you, you don't even tell if that's the instrument that they're selling. This could just be some standard picture of a viola so that you know that uh, yeah, you're actually buying a viola, you jerk. Uh, but is it any good? Well, this is a Tower of Strings. I happen to have a Tower of Strings right back here. Now, as you can see, this is fairly well made for a $400 violin. It's very well made. It it's very good sound, but why is this one $400 and that bigger one is only $300? And the answer is that this is electric acoustic. And you see the equalizer over here, you see the output jack over here. Um, if you see some of my other videos that I've done on this channel, you know that I have this little love affair with electric acoustic instruments, something that you can play regularly acoustically, or you can plug it into the amplifier and really begin to rock out. I realize that's not exactly everybody's cup of tea. That's also why this particular instrument is more expensive than the other one, because you're buying the electronics, you're buying the, the labor to, to install all these things into the instrument. So, okay, so there's a $300 viola. Fair enough, but not everybody has $300. So the question is, could you just take the strings from a viola and put it onto a violin? And basically, creating a viola for the price of a new set of strings. One, two, three, twenty pounds, huh? Is that enough? I'll see what I can do. So the question then becomes, which string should you use in particular? Now, this comes from my days as a guitarist rather than a violinist. 
that I became accustomed to using the Dario strings because you play for so long, you get sort of this uh, reputation with this particular brand that you end up loving them. So I was very well pleased that I discovered that the Dario actually makes violin strings as well. So I'm already used to the brand, I'm already used to the quality of the brand, the price is right for the quality that you're getting. So I looked again on Fiddler Shop and see what they had, and they had actually four different sizes of viola strings, so long, medium, short, and extra short. So which one should you use? So the challenge should be that I'm placing the long size strings, these ones in particular, onto an instrument that is designed for the short size. And what is this going to do exactly? Now, when you're placing longer strings on a shorter instrument, you're taking strings that are, that are designed with a certain gauge, the thickness of the string, the length of the string, and the tension that string is under to produce a particular note. So when you're putting those longer strings onto a shorter instrument, what you're doing effectively is reducing the amount of tension that's on that string. So what I'm anticipating, at the very least, is I'm anticipating a tonal quality of the strings that's a lot softer, a lot more mellow, a lot more uh, deeper in tone. That is going to be compared to the, the brighter sound or the kind of harder sound that you're going to inspect from strings that are a lot higher in tension. The viola is more designed to play uh, mid-range notes that kind of flesh out the sound of the orchestra, whereas the violins play the high notes and the cellos and the basses play those low notes. I've only known of one instance, as a matter of fact, in which the viola was actually playing more of a melody, and that's because it was actually a duet between a viola and a cello. They were playing a piece called Resilience, which was actually uh, inspired by the anniversary of World War II. It was performed by two students of Juilliard, by the way, who were absolutely brilliant in the way that they did things. Uh, it really, really puts you in the mood of being, say, in a in a burnt out village going from, you know, one house to another trying to find the enemy and uh, it, they really did a good job with it, I thought. Uh, and that's not really the same as a viola playing a melody per se, but it's about as close as you're going to get to it. Uh, so what I'm anticipating then, placing these long strings onto a short violin, reducing the tension, is going to be playing the softer and lower tones that, frankly, I enjoy playing anyway. So I think that I'm going to love the sound, but just in case I don't, just in case I just absolutely hate how it sounds, I do have the second set of strings, which is the short strings that I should be placing on a 14-inch viola instead of the long strings here. So if I like how it sounds, I'm just going to keep it that way and use these strings for something else, in other words. So let's get these things switched out and see how it sounds. Okay, so I got these new strings on and basically got it tuned up enough. C, G, B, and A. Uh, a couple of observations. First of all, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell this on the camera, but when you put longer strings onto a shorter instrument. I'm going to try to get this in the light as much as possible. It goes well past that cloth sheath that's around the tip of the string and you're putting more of the, the metal part of the string around the tuning peg. So you're wrapping more of the string around the tuning peg to compensate for the fact that this is a, a longer string on a shorter instrument. That's not too much of an issue. There's just something that you're going to have to deal with when you're messing around with different string lengths. I was correct when I predicted that the longer strings that are slacked down it causes them to vibrate more when it's on the string or on the instrument. The only real issue that I've noticed that you have is when you're using the bow and it's only the C string, the G string, the D string, and the A string. I don't have an issue with, but this D string, this the one all the way down at the bottom, sometimes the rosin that's on the bow, which is supposed to catch the string, rub against it, and make the string vibrate. But I've noticed that 
occasionally, just a little bit, it's actually dragging the string along with it. Causing the string to go slightly higher in pitch than normal. And it's only on the C, C string that I've noticed that. Um, and I expect that a little bit when you slide down strings, you're, you're creating this problem of the string drag the way that I just talked about. It's more problematic if I'm slacking the string down even further than that, further, further, further down. The more and more that you slack down violin strings, the more that you're going to have that type of string drag when you pull the bow across it. And that's going to really mess up the quality of the sound that you're going to get out of the instrument because you have the basically two different pitches of the sound from the strings down to the bridge down inside the instrument and bouncing around resonating inside of the instrument and once you're having these multiple different pitches multiple different wavelengths of the sound waves inside the body of the instrument at the same time they begin to interfere with each other which creates really really bad sound and the other thing that i notice is that you notice i'm using the the black bow here as opposed to this brown one this brown one is a violin bow, and this black one specifically is a viola bow. And I'm not certain it was because I switched out for the viola bow, or if it's just that this is a higher quality bow than the other one that's causing a really uh, big difference in the quality of sound that I'm getting out of the instrument. Uh, this, cause this is a newer bow, it's more expensive bow, but it's also a bow specifically for the viola, so I don't know if that makes too much of a difference, but for some reason it does, and maybe uh, Olaf, the double oval maker, can explain to me why it is that this bow in particular is making a higher quality sound than that other bow. It was because of what the bow's made of? I, I don't know. I don't know for certain. So overall, I'm very well pleased. I had considered the idea of replacing the C string with the uh, with the uh, short size C string, so I can get a little bit more tension out of the string. But for now, I'm going to keep it as it is, so that way I can just have this set of string that's that's brand new. It's ready to be used. If I have some other project that I want to use it for, so I don't have to break up that set of strings. Uh, other than that, I, I like it. I like the fact that I now have a viola the size of a violin that's actually better, uh, more closely matched to my arm length. And as I anticipated, being lower tension strings, I like the tonal quality that I'm getting out of this instrument, which uh, may not be uh, for everybody's liking. Maybe other people like higher tension strings, but I like the lower tones. Uh, maybe a little bit better than some other people might. And that's a personal preference thing. But I, I'm very well pleased with this instrument right now. Thank you for watching. And thank you, Olaf the Violin Maker. I know I've been making fun of your name <laughs> this entire video, but I really do appreciate your work, and I'm hoping to see other videos from you. Thank you for watching. Can you believe this? What the hell's wrong with this country? You can't get a drink after three, you can't eat after nine. Is the war still on?